Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and I am here with lesson number seven on using your BeagleBone Black RevC microcontroller. <clears throat> and what we're going to do today is we're going to take what we learned in lesson number six on how to generate PWM signals and we're going to do a quick demonstration of how we can create dimmable LEDs uh, using the BeagleBone Black. And so we'll be applying what we learned last time in Lesson 6, but what we'll be doing is we'll be actually applying it to a real circuit this time. <clears throat> to get started, you will need to hook up the following circuit. These are 330 ohm resistors, current limiting resistors. We have two red LEDs. And for our PWM pins, we are using pin 14. It is uh, P9 uh, and then underscore 14 and then header P9 underscore 22. So we're using pin 14 and 22 on the P9 header. And then we are using the upper left ground, uh, the upper left pin 1 on header P9 to generate the ground. We bring the ground over, create a ground rail. We go from the ground rail to the short leg of the top LED. Long leg goes to the current limiting resistor, and then the current limiting resistor <coughs> on the top goes to pin 14. Similarly, we come from the ground rail to the short leg of the bottom LED. Long leg of the bottom LED goes to the current limiting resistor. Other end of the current limiting resistor goes to pin 22 on header P9. That's how you hook the circuit up. So once you get it hooked up, then we are ready to come in and start writing some code. And so let's see if we can get a window up here. I'm probably going to have to clear out of this. Uh, okay, let me uh, let me see if I can get a terminal window up here. I'm sorry, I should have had all this stuff up before. Is I've got my terminal window, window going now. You can see that I'm logged in as the default root user on the uh, BeagleBone Black, and we are ready to now write some code that will allow us to control the brightness of those two LEDs. Remember, if we uh, look, uh, we've been, if you've been following along in these lessons, I created a folder called My Python. I put my Python files there. I like to go down into that folder so I don't have to keep typing the path name. So I'm going to CD into My Python. If you don't have that, you can do a mkdir, make directory mkdir space my underscore Python, and you can have one of these too. <clears throat> what are we going to call this program? Well, we edit it with nano, so we say nano to get into the editor, and then we're going to go dim led.py. I always like to put the .py extension on my Python files. helps me stay organized. All right, I am in the editor. <clears throat> First thing we need to do is, like we've done for most of these, we need to import the most excellent add a fruit underscore b b i o dot p w m uh, dot p w m dot PWM as PWM. <clears throat> this will import the Adafruit library. If you have the uh, Debian Wheezy 7, which comes nowadays with the BeagleBone Black uh, Rev C, you already have this uh, library loaded on your system, and then it will import here properly. If you get an error when you type this in exactly correctly, if you have an error, you need to go back and update and upgrade your operating system, and then you should have this library ready for you to use. Once we import the library, we need to set up two pins. You can see that we have two LEDs, so I'm going to call it T LED for the top LED. And as we saw earlier, that is hooked to header 9, so I put P9, and it is hooked to pin 14. So now I have defined T LED to be this, so I don't have to keep typing that physical pin in. And then B for bottom LED, we have that hooked to header 9, P9, and then underscore 22. Those are the two uh, PWM pins that we will be using for this lesson. Now we need to start the PWM. We need to initialize those pins for PWM. So we're going to say PWM.start. Notice the PWM is uppercase. The start is lowercase. Well, what do we want to turn in on the top LED? How do we say that? T LED. 
what do we want to do? Well, the first thing we do is we put in the duty cycle. We want to start with them off, so we're going to put a duty cycle of zero. And then what frequency? A thousand hertz works very well. And PWM, what are we going to start this time? We are going to start the bottom LED, which is BLED. And then we want to start it off, and we want a thousand hertz, just like the other one. We are ready to have a for loop. We're going to loop to, through five times, and so we'll ask the user five times how what brightness he wants each LED. So to create the for loop in Python for i in range, and then we are going to start where? We'll start at zero, and then how many times do we want to go? Five. That will go up to, but not including five. So it will go zero, one, two, three, four. So when we say zero to five, it'll stop at four, but it will loop five times because we started at zero. A little confusing. That's just the way programmers think. What do we need? We need to ask the user for a brightness. <clears throat> we our duty cycle can go from zero to a hundred. But if we just ask them for a number between 0 to 100, the brightness of an LED is very nonlinear. And so I want to create an exponential scale. So I will ask him for a linear number between, uh, between 0 and 7. And then I'll convert that to an exponential. In that way, the difference between 0 and 1 will be the same as the difference between 1 and 2, which will be the same as the difference between 1 and 3, which will be the same as the difference between 3 and 4, and so forth. So it will be a nice, smooth scale. When you're working with LEDs on brightness, you've got to sort of have an exponential scale. So I will show how that will go. So for the perceived brightness, we'll ask for a number between 0 and 7. So I'll say TB, that's the top brightness, is going to be equal to input brightness top LED question mark space. Why do I put the space there? So when the person responds and put an answer in, it's not jammed up against the question mark. It is good formatting. <clears throat> and then we need to close off that parentheses. Then I will have the bottom uh, brightness will be equal to input brightness of bottom LED question mark space <clears throat> close your quote close your parentheses alright now I have those two brightnesses what I need to do though is I need to now convert those to a number more like between 1 and 100 and the way we can do that is I can say TB and then the actual T B and then the actual duty cycle that I'm going to apply is going to be an exponential. So I will say let's take 2 raised to the top brightness. <clears throat> so if I input 0, I guess I should come up here. Speaking of that, I should tell them what they can enter. So I'll say, you know, from 0 to 7, I'll give them some help on what's acceptable. <clears throat> and then 0 to 7. That looks good. So top brightness, the duty cycle would be 2 raised to the TB. And then bottom brightness, duty cycle, is going to be equal to 2 raised to the uh, BB. <coughs> so let's think about this. If the person enters a 2, the duty cycle they will uh, approach will be 2 to the 0, which will be 1, which is a duty cycle of 1%, which is barely on. But if they put a 1, 2 to the 1 is 2, that's twice as big on a log scale. If they put 2, it's 4. It's twice as big. So you can see I'm generating this exponential scale, and that will give a perception of smooth brightness increments when we actually run this thing. I hope that makes sense to you. Okay, if we take 2 to the 7, that's a little over 100, so we got to make sure that we don't go over 100. So we just say, if uh, TB duty cycle is greater than 100 in a colon. Now we've got to tab over, because this will be the if clause, so we've got to tab over one more. TBDC is equal to 100. 
What is that doing? That's just saying if they input something that's greater, that leads to a TBDC of greater than 100, we don't want the program to crash when you try to apply a duty cycle greater than 100. Okay, so we set it where it cannot get past here. It will be always be no more than 100. Similarly, if uh, ooh, uh, yeah, if uh, BBDC uh, is greater than 100, <clears throat> then we're going to go BBDC is equal to 100. So that'll fix it. Make sure that the program doesn't crash. So now we know what we want to apply. How do we apply the PWM signal? We see PWM dot set duty cycle. <clears throat> Where do we want to set it? On top LED, top LED, like that. And then what do we want to set it to? That number we just calculated, top BD, top BDC. And then we want to do the bottom LED, so we do PWM.set duty cycle bottom LED. And then what do we put there? The bottom brightness duty cycle. Like that. I think I got an extra space here. Okay. I think that looks good. And then what will it do? It will go back and it'll loop through and ask for different brightnesses so we can play around with the brightness. Now we always need to clean up our mess so before we move on let's, sh uh, let's shut this stuff down. So once we leave the loop, how do we show that we're leaving the loop? We stop indenting so that makes it where we are no longer in the loop. So pwm.stop and where do we want to stop it? The top LED as such. PWM, we want to stop the what? Bottom, bottom LED. And then we want to clean everything up. So we just say PWM dot clean up. And that cleans everything up. Let's look over this. <clears throat> we set up our pins. We spelled this all right. We set up our pins. We start the top LED, start the bottom LED. Initially, it's going to be a 0% duty cycle and 1,000 hertz. Then we loop through this five times asking what brightness they want, and then we apply those brightnesses to the top and bottom LEDs. This looks good. Control O. We like the name we gave it, so Enter and Control X. Now we run it with... Uh, Python dim LED dot pi. I am in that folder so I don't have to put a path name. So let's see how many mistakes we made. So far so good. So let's say the top I'm going to set it to a brightness of 2 and the bottom I'm going to set at a brightness of 7. So I have 2 and 7 so the top should be very dim and the bottom should be very bright. Let's see what happens. Okay, look at that. Top is very dim, bottom is very bright. You can hardly see that that is on. So let's see if that helps a little bit. Yeah, that helps a little bit. You can see the top one's barely on and the bot bottom one's on full bright. Let's do it different. Let's say the top is very bright, 7, and let's say the bottom is very dim, and we'll say 1. And look at that. The top is very bright, the bottom is very dim. What if we say a little bit closer? What if we say, let's see if we can go to zero. I'm going to say seven, and that, so the top one shouldn't change brightness, but this bottom one should get even dimmer. So the top is seven, the bottom I'm going to put zero. That should just be barely on. Let's see if we can perceive a difference. Yeah, you could see it dimmed down even more. So that's a 1% duty cycle, and the top one is a 100% duty cycle. Let's go the other way. Let's go seven and zero. Okay, uh, that was the same way. Okay, let's go zero and seven. Okay, we need to run the program again because we ran through all of our loops. Okay, so we're going to go dim LED. Okay, we're going to go seven, zero, and then zero, seven. So we'll go seven on the top, zero on the bottom, and boom, look at that. Now we'll go zero on the top, 
and 7 on the bottom, and let's watch it. Boom, it's switched. And you can see the top is on, but the top is barely on. Let's go like 4, let's go 3 on the top, dimmer on the top, 3 on the top, 4 on the bottom. They'll be almost the same, but the bottom will be a little brighter. Okay, there it is. So you can see that this thing works. So what this is, is this is a practical application of using the PWM to control elements of a circuit. It's a simple demonstration, but it shows you how you can start getting your BeagleBone Black working with a real circuit. Paul McWhorter, toptechboy.com. Tune in shortly for some more BeagleBone lessons, and we will talk to you guys later.